All right, we are here at my DIY tiny worm bin, and there's three things we want to look for today in this feeding. First is moisture levels, and already I can see that this newspaper is really wet, but I want to talk a little bit more about that. We'll also check out the last feeding that had strawberries, three pasta shells, and some potato skins. And finally, we're going to check in on the bracelet packaging that I got for Christmas. We had put it in here. It was a little burlap sack and some packaging from my wife's that she had gotten. So let's take a look at this lid. And as you can see, it is absolutely soaking wet. I mean, there is a ton of moisture here. So I'm wondering what's going on. Now, I'm here in Florida, and in the summer, it is extremely humid and hot and the air conditioning turns on and it draws so much humidity out of the air indoors that I have trouble with keeping the bins moist enough. Well now that we're in winter it's kind of the opposite. My air conditioning is not on that much neither is my heater so it actually gets pretty humid inside the house. So I think that's what's going on. And believe it or not, I think it's dry in here. When I looked at that last feeding with the burlap sack and the cardboard, I didn't put any extra water. And it just kind of looked like a dry feeding with those three pasta shells. So I'm wondering if, you know, this newspaper is sheltering the water. It's getting onto the lid and just hitting on the newspaper and kind of dripping off when I usually put the newspaper on to retain moisture. So let's start digging in and see what's going on with this bin. And right here, it looks like I'm looking at some mites. Let me lift them up and just kind of, maybe we'll do a time lapse. And actually, I could see it even not in time lapse that those are mites. So certainly on the surface here, there is a ton of moisture. So let's go digging down and see if it's moist throughout. So the feeding zone was right here in the middle. And sure enough, wherever there's moisture, you're going to see lots of worms. They certainly love moisture. That's how they breathe through the dissolved oxygen in there. And, you know, right away I'm seeing a lot of worms and actually a lot of pot worms. You see those right there? They're kind of moving around, those white, almost wispy things. Those are pot worms. This is one of the biggest infestations of potworms I've seen. So what I'm thinking is that this bin is way too moist. And I've got to kind of think back to what I fed them to see why this might be. So let's keep digging in. This is a little strange for my bins. And yeah, this is really wet right here. I was worried about it being dry down in here, but it's quite the opposite. It is wet. And look at that, just a ton of potworms. I don't remember what I fed them that they would be so, and mites, just tons of mites, tons of mites. So we've got some things to correct in this bin. And this looks like it is the packaging for the bracelet that my wife got. It was just a kind of a piece of cardboard. It's starting to break down. It certainly got moist. And let me see if I can rip it, but there's they're definitely teeming all over it. Definitely moist throughout. So my fears of it being too dry in here are totally unfounded. I'm just going to move this out of the way and I'll put it back. Actually, I think I'm just going to keep it in here. All right, let's keep digging. Here's that burlap sack. And again, a ton of mites on here. And it feels flat. I had put some strawberries inside of it. And it looks like the worms all went in there. In fact, so did the pot worms. And they definitely started eating this. Now, one of the things I was wondering about was the ink that is on this. It kind of feels like a textured ink. So I'm wondering if when this burlap sack gets totally eaten, if we'll have like a cutout of this 4-0 right here and some of this stuff over here. But the worms are definitely going through it. And again, some more pot worms. So the goal of this bin, this feeding is gonna be to dry things out. A Couple ways we can do that. One of them is to add more bedding and another is to not feed. And I think we're going to do a little bit of both. The worms don't seem to mind, and they are definitely all over this middle feeding zone here. So I'm just going to dig around and kind of spread out what we had. It's surprising. I wonder if it was potatoes. Put some of those potato skins in here. If anybody wants to put in the comments what they think could be causing the outbreak of potworms, other than moisture, was it 
possibly the potatoes that I had in here. Is that something that you see when you put potato skins in here? Moisture feels good over in this corner. Certainly not as moist as before. The other thing I could do is I could leave the lid off. Although there's some pretty big holes in the lid, it's still, you know, you could tell the moisture evaporates, hits the lid, and then falls back in. Lots of worms. That's something that's great about this bin right now is it's 54 days old and it is producing like crazy. It's been six days since our last feeding, so I'm glad I kind of got in here a little bit earlier than I typically do. Usually I'm about seven or eight days before I get into a bin. And you can see this is, there's just a ton of castings in here. It's a little chunkier, chunked up than I typically see, but the cardboard pieces are fewer and the castings are more than when we started this thing out. So let's push this over here. This bin's actually getting a little unruly. It's a little high. So the fact that I'm gonna be putting in more bedding, it's gonna make it a little bit tough. Let's come over here and see what we feel here. Kind of the same thing. It feels drier in the corner, which typically I feel that it's wetter in the corner, but now it's drier in the corner. It also could have been that pasta. I put three pasta shells in there. So potatoes or pasta, now that I'm I'm just thinking back to why there could be so many potworms. The other thing that happens in a, a new bin, although this isn't necessarily new, is that you'll get kind of a cycle. First, you might get springtails, then mites or mites, then springtails, and they get out of balance. You get potworms. And then kind of by, I don't know, two-thirds of the way in, everything is just in balance. And you don't see a lot of any one thing like mites or springtails or potworms. So I just may be going through a cycle right here. And, you know, every time I pull some a new handful up, you just see lots of worms. Let's keep digging under here. Yeah. I only saw those potworms around the feeding and around this stuff right here, around the, um, the packaging, which was where the feeding was. So that's definitely the culprit. That's definitely where things are, you know, possibly going awry a little bit. So let me put this over here, dig this last corner up, and then we will set a feeding zone, but I don't think I'm gonna feed. I think it's just gonna be paper, and this bedding, yep, just a bunch of worms again. Fantastic, really cool. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll set this up here in the middle. Yeah, I can feel it moist. I think what I'm gonna do is each day for maybe three or four hours, I'll have that lid off. Maybe even take the newspaper off and just kind of let things dry out a little bit. I actually, run my bins a little bit drier typically than what I hear other people in the comments. I sometimes get people telling me that my bin looks too dry, but I have found that it's much easier for me to control a dry bin and get a little bit wet than, than to deal with the situation I have here, which is a wet bin and how to get it a little bit drier. So we're just gonna rip this stuff up a little bit and put it right back down in there. And then I'll put the burlap sack in there too. Nothing really to put inside, but I don't know if the camera can see this, but there are worms that have made their way inside this little burlap sack. And the integrity of it is still intact. I don't see them necessarily taking it apart, but they are surrounding it and, you know, the mites are on it too and they'll help break it down too. So let's put all that stuff in there. Here's one of those potato skins. Yeah, let's put that stuff in there. Here's some additional dry bedding that we'll put in here. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep filling it up. I'll just do this, just like that. That will be the feeding that they get is just more bedding. All right, we've got some work to do in here. Um, again, any commenters want to help me out with what they think could be the problem or how to fix it, y'all are pretty good at letting me know what you've experienced in your bins, and I really appreciate that. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I've got two other bins, an outdoor bin and another indoor vermi hut worm tower. So go ahead and check those out. But that's all we're going to do in here. I'm not going to put the coffee. I'm not going to put the eggshells and look a little worm right there. Must have been on my glove.
but I'm not going to put the grit on. I think I'm just going to try and get this bin back to the moisture level that I want it to be. So let me put this newspaper back on just for now. And then tomorrow I will open the lid, see how the moisture level is doing, and maybe leave the lid off for a few hours and let the bin kind of dry out. So hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.